No, we are live. Yeah. Media, the full experience of Kathy. Oh my! Oh goodness I'm me! Jam and peaceful media. You know, we are really, really excited today because Kathy is one of the premier thought leaders in helping women, men. Doesn't matter. You can be in between. You can be a dog, cat. Doesn't really matter. She will help you find the career bliss that you want, and she is a freaking dialed in thought leader. She is not a fake it till you make it type of gal. In fact, some of her Forbes.com posts are are famous in in uh, in the content marketing world with over seven million, seven million hits on some of them. So she's doing her thing and helping a lot of people find their way, their lane, their efficiency and power strip, if you will in the thought leadership and just whatever that next is in life. And one of the things that attracts me to Kathy is, is her heart and her sensitivity and care for her audience. Um, I got the mm. pleasure of meeting her. In fact, Kathy, you'll remember this. I, I was uh, brought in by one of our clients to discuss what we would do for a website platform for their podcast, MoFall who's one of our clients oh, and so they were doing yeah. a podcast together. And so I got an opportunity to say, hey, here's what we would do. I put together a proposal. They ultimately said, no, we've got this other person we we were going to go with, but we loved your proposal. And so then she comes back and, you know, what was it, Kathy, like a year ago? Yeah. Well, September will be a year. Yeah, yeah. She comes back and three says, episodes hey, ago. Let's do. Uh, I've got a huge Forbes following. Let's, you know, let's do an article together. So hell yeah, let's do that. So we had a wonderful time collaborating on a Forbes article that's going to go live in a couple of days, hopefully. Absolutely. And um, and so we'll post about that. But I was also like, God, this is so fun working with someone who's on the top of their game. Can I host you uh, for our audience and help oh. the thought leaders we work with and attract? to find their way up to the top of the mountain. Oh, Jason, thank you for having me. And ditto right back, back at you. We all know so many people in this world, in this thought leadership, online marketing world, and so many have huge hearts and huge minds, and some don't. And so when, when we connect with... <laughs> can I be... <laughs> so are we all idiots out there. <laughs> I'm really talking about the spirit and the heart part first. Absolutely. So when you totally meet someone you like like you, Jason, I know I got I know it's a good thing and I yeah. can't get enough. So thank you so much for having me. Yeah, well, thank you for connecting me to all these amazing people that you're you're working with. And uh the the thing that I was like, hey Kathy, can you come up with a something we can talk about on a webcast for our audience? And and there was this vein in our or this sort of thread in our article that we collaborated on. For Forbes that really spoke to what are the intangibles that aren't being taught to the thought leader. Now, just to be clear, the thought leader is mm. the person who's trying to get basically create a whole career around sharing their expertise, telling a story, and monetizing, you know, courses, online products, etc., masterminds, retreats. It's a, it's really a, a cottage industry that is uh, quickly growing big big girl and big boy britches out there. As you see some of our clients, you see the folks like Kathy out there crushing it, making, you know, way more, way more money and having way more fun than they did in corporate. And um, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, that's an assumption, Kathy, I'm not in your life every day, but it sounds like you're having a freaking uh, great time every day working with people you love every day. That's it. I am. I yeah. have to say it. I mean, not every, let's not, let's not wax poetic about everything. You know, running a business, it's got its strains, it's got its issues. But if you do like to manage where you're going and be the boss in terms of who you can say yes to and who you can say no to. I mean, when I look at my corporate life, the things that made me crazy were I couldn't suffer fools. I'd be in meetings and I'd be like, I don't get it. Why? Why aren't we just saying <laughs> we're losing our shirts here? We need to, you know, what? Yeah. And if I'd say it, I would be like, "You're not a team player. 
you know, I'd be like, oh. So <laughs> it would be things like that, suffering fools and going to the same office every day, just stuff that made no sense to me. But when yeah. you're in that environment, you feel crazy if if you're not drinking the Kool-Aid, as we sometimes say. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I'm having a ball. But it, it's it's not for the faint of heart. Well, and that's the whole spirit of this is helping people identify before they make a big leap. Maybe you're like, you see those, the Brendan Burchards in our, in our world, you see the Jeff Walkers, you see these people having so much fun and quote unquote, you know, making so much impact and money online. And you're like, gosh, dang, man, I got an expertise. I got something I could share with the world. I'm going to do that thing. I'm going to go online. And that's when they, they reach out to Peaceful Media. That's when they reach out to you, Kathy, for guidance on that path of transitioning to a different way of being in their careers. And um, I got to tell you, and Kathy, you and I were talking about this earlier, there are some people who are not equipped. They might have the, the best of intentions. They might have even some funding to you know make it happen and put together some some savings and they really really are ready to invest and then they they come to this door and they go to open it and they're like whoa 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 whoa, whoa. nobody <laughs> told me it was gonna take this and so this webinar is all about asking yourself 10 questions maybe more but we'll talk about 10 today that'll help you identify if you have what it takes to make it, to truly make it and have fun in the thought leadership industry. And there's nobody, nobody better to take us through those 10 than Kathy. So I'm very excited to be here. Thank, Thank you. you. So, uh, so you started in corporate. Um, yep. Talk to us about how, you know, there's some key steps to finding the career bliss and that next, whatever that next is. Um, you know, what are some of the questions that you wish you would have asked uh, when you were making that transition? Yeah, and do you mind if I do this? We have 10 questions about how to really rock it as a thought leader, but sure. I, I just want to share two minutes of, of what happened to me so everyone can see it. It's wow. not like this. It's <laughs> like, woohoo, bumps. So, and, and there's one thing I'm going to share that when it happened to me, I thought no one can ever know this because this is the worst thing in the world. Uh -huh. And now I tell it in every class. So quickly, you know, I had an 18 year corporate career and it was bumpy the whole way. But after spending so many years, I didn't, I couldn't understand well, how do I leverage what I've done and not start over? I'm 40. I have young kids. They're 19 and 22 now. But, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. So, you know, quickly after a huge, brutal layoff after 9 11, I was in my therapist's office crying and he said, you know, this looks like the worst crisis you've ever faced, but from where I sit, it's the first moment you can choose who you want to be. Now, who do you want to be? Jason, that was the single most life-changing question. That I guess no one had ever asked, and I hadn't asked myself. And I said, I don't want to hurt anymore. I want to be you. And he laughed and said, what does that mean to you? And I said, I want to help people. And from that conversation, I became a therapist. So this is what I want to say to everyone. I thought I was going to run away from corporate life and that therapy would save me. So yeah. thing number one, thing number one here is there are so many thought leaders who are actually wounded healers, wounded people, and they're kind of running away. And so I do a lot of work with people about, okay, we're not running away anymore. We're going to deal with what your challenges are right now, address them, and then you can, right? But mm -hmm. I, I went to the world of therapy thinking, woohoo, all my challenges will be gone. And then six years into it, rape, incest, pedophilia, drug addiction, suicidality, some of the same challenges I had in the corporate world reappeared. And I thought, oh, oh, brother, this didn't work. And, you know, I found coaching and I love coaching for a lot of reasons. But then I want to tell you, I did what a lot of emerging thought leaders do. I'm smart. I had some corporate experience that rocked. I'm going to make a hundred grand, like, like yep. now. Yep. And I, I thought, how could I not? And what happened was I had a one-on-one -on -one model. Well, that is not sustainable. It isn't sustainable, period. And how are you going to fill that pipeline? How are you going to get 40 clients, you know, a week? So well, the thing that I want to tell you is, I was in such denial that six years ago, I almost lost my house. 
I mean, the marshal came to the door with, oh, look at me, I still get choked up. With, I still have like post-traumatic stress when the doorbell rings. Not kidding. Wow. Here's the papers. You're going to lose your house. Wow. So you know how you and I spoke earlier about, I think that when you've had trauma around being who you want to be or delivering your thought leadership and it doesn't go the way you want or being a therapist and it doesn't, you feel so deeply the wish to help other people. Yeah. It's, it's not let me heal myself. It's let me help people not go through what I went through. So I think I just share that with anyone who's in your world who wants to be Brendan Burchard or, you know, whoever it is, but struggles. Um, struggle is part of it. Struggle is a necessary part of it. Nobody comes out of the shoot where Brendan is or my fave Sean Acor or Brene Brown. Look at what they've used of themselves. So I wanted to tell that story to set the stage. Beautifully said, beautifully said, and yeah, uh, so much I could riff on there, but I'm going to let you guide. You're you're on a roll. Oh, I want to hear what you have to say, always. Um, I I see people, I see people with the number one priority of as they come out of corporate or they come out of a previous success in a career with a number one priority to replace that income. And I think what you're highlighting here is, you know, what needs to happen as a first priority is loving and serving and taking care of people so that they don't have to go through what you've gone through, how you gained your expertise, how you sharpened your sword is what people want and need. And that needs to be number one. Uh, it's it's so obvious when someone comes in and and the first thing they want to do is launch a course because why because their number one priority is to make a bunch of money and they and I and I, on one level I get it there's a practicality of if you have mouths to feed a mortgage to pay and lights to keep on then oh, you know what you're gonna need you're gonna need some damn money <laughs> you know but. Oh. Gosh. But that's and that's fine. I mean, we all this is business. You need to be able to sustain yourself and pay yourself in order to stay in business, right? So I get that. And if if that becomes one, two, and three, or if people feel that it's maybe one and one and a half, you are you are going to struggle. You're you really are, at least working, you wouldn't work with us, period. But yeah, you're gonna struggle because people will feel that. You're right. The, the you know, I've even industry uh, is a transparent game. It's oh, people, you're right. It's Pete, your image. It's your personal name. If they experience one thing of you on this webinar and they go over here, and it, it, because you have a different host, you're acting like a freaking fool, or the jerk that you really are when you don't have your best face on. Guess what? Tribe gone. You're so right, and. There's an even deeper thing here. When you are driven by fear around money, you make decisions that don't support your growth. Mm -hmm. I remember, you know, I'm a coach and I love it. And I remember someone said, you'll make more money as an executive coach where mm -hmm. the company pays you. And I'm like, okay, let me do that. I personally usually have a very hard time with that because there's a conflict of interest. The company's paying me usually to fix her when in fact, guess what needs to be fixed? Mm -hmm. So, but, but sometimes we'll just do the thing that we think makes money. So you're talking about passive income. Now everyone's knows as a coach, okay, I can't have a sustainable practice one-on-one -on -one passive income. So what can I teach? But they really haven't done the work to teach. Yeah. So, right? Yeah. They don't, they don't have All right. So they don't woo. have a body of work. <laughs> so I, I, of work. I think you're going to come up with a question here. Yeah, so let's hit the 10 questions to ask yourself yeah. if you're really ready, right? Number one, have I developed a clear model for change and a well-articulated, teachable point of view that I'm able to take people through step-by-step step for their success and their benefit? So let me just talk about that for one second. I did not know what a teachable point of view is or a model for change. Uh, even though I, I studied therapy and it's all a model for change. You know, there's a systemic model, there's a structural model, there's 
But when I started writing my first book, Breakdown Breakthrough, I thought I knew everything there needed to be said about professional crisis and a really top editorial consultant who works with Elizabeth Marshall, one of our favorite people, said, yes. mm, "You, this is not your big idea. This is like a little workbook. You need to research. And I thought, what do I need to research for? I know everything. Ah, narcissist. So I did for a year. And so I started writing this book with Barrett Kohler and the editor said, what is your model for change? Where is your model for change? And I kept saying, what are you talking? What? I don't know what you mean. What she meant was you need to have a process by which you will bring every single person through, man, woman, child, whatever your clients are, that has predictable outcomes. Mm. You're not just flying by the seat of your pants here. And you're not just giving advice. A lot of people say, I want to be a coach because I want to give advice. You know, I, I'm a consultant as well, so I give advice, but I put that hat on and say, I'm being very directive now and I want you to push back. It's not about sitting there giving advice. It's about having a process that's been vetted and tested and that you have taken your hard earned knowledge and wisdom and you've broken it down into a teachable point of view. And that just doesn't come flying out, right, Jason? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just, I'll just do some damn videos and put up some of my my thoughts from every morning. That'll make me a <laughs> make me a six figure business. I know because I see my guru doing that. Now I mean, <laughs> so I I think I should we should make a distinction here, Kathy. So are these questions that one needs to ask before they ever step foot into this? Because I call I could also push back on on this question. In the sense that this could create a whole wild world of perfectionist. Oh, no, I can't do it. Oh, 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 I don't have that yet. I can't get into that. Whereas it sounds like in your experience, you had stepped into it. You were already deep into an editorial process as a, you know, a thought leader writing a book is nothing like yeah. more tangible than a book. Then, and, and then the editor's like, hey, where's your teachable moment? And I, and I think that. If, if they, I'm never stepping foot, I'm never creating a, a blog post or a video without my teachable moment, my signature system, my my process for change all dialed in and got a spiffy label and all that stuff done, then I will never get started. Good question. So I think what I'm, I'm differentiating here is, you know, a lot of people will say, I'm ready to be a thought leader like Jason. And they they want to go from point A to point Z in about 30 seconds. Yeah. And what I'm saying here is that's not possible. But if you engage in asking yourselves these questions, like if you asked yourself, do I have a model for change? Most of us say no. So what did I do? It was, I, I really love this suggestion. I started looking at half of my mind split when I was on the phone with a client. I would attend to them, but the other half would watch. Where am I going with what they say? Yeah. What do I attend to? And what I started to realize is I look for people's power gaps. Other people look at strengths. I have a belief that when you're clear and confident, that's when you fly. It's when you're not clear and you're not confident, you break down. So I'm on the lookout constantly for language and and thought and beliefs and and uh, you know nonverbals that show me where you are broken down where you don't like yourself where you don't you know yeah so i i started seeing that's what i look at and i started watching what my process is once i see that you have a a, a power gap right so i'm asking everyone it's not that you can't start putting yourself out there today you need to but i'm asking you to do it a little deeper than you are yeah good point so that this this question is really for the person who I, is looking at this and needs to become aware of it or is already doing this and not having the success that they've they've exactly been told right. they can have very quickly this may be the catalyst question that helps you understand why there's a gap in your success and yes. your guru's success i think so yeah that's okay. our point Perfect. yeah awesome Perfect. so the second one shall we go there absolutely is is this model proven, tested, and researched, and do I know it's effective? So I have a little bit of a pet peeve because I train coaches now and, and a certain, you know, certain level of coaches with a certain commitment. 
I see a lot of people saying they're running from their corporate job and they say, I'm a coach now. And number one, there's zero training. Number two, they weren't put to the fire. I mean, the single hardest thing I ever went through was the first day I had to do therapy in front of a wall, a double sided mirror with a team evaluating me. I swear to you, I thought either I'm going to have a heart attack right here and I'm not going to have to do it. <laughs> or I'm going to throw up and I'm not going to have to do it. I mean, you know, to sit one on one with someone and be critiqued. Yeah. And I just want to share this, why this is so important. The, the supervisor, I came out, how did I do? And this is what the supervisor said. Okay, you got a problem. She was crying and you got up and gave her a tissue. And I said, that's my problem? That's my biggest problem as a therapist. She said, stop making light of it. You are not comfortable with people's emotions. You were stopping her from feeling because you're not comfortable with it. Wow. Oh. Oh, I know where we were um, about coaches that say, let yeah. me just, let me just hang my shingle. Yes. Um, yes. And you went and through the process of getting peer reviewed, educated, trained. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And then, uh, and then, you know, and wanted to barf. Watch. Yeah. Wanting to barf. Okay. You ready for this? Yeah. All right. Sorry. Sorry. I disappeared there for a minute. Uh, so what I'm really trying to get at here is it, it's really not enough. I feel that, Hey, I've got a great idea. I mean, share it, write it. Absolutely. Write it on LinkedIn, write it on your blog post. But when we're talking about true thought leadership, I mean, think about the people that really inspire us, the TED Talks that we love. It's because they've done the work of vetting it. It's yep. not just, Hee -hee, I have a fun idea. Yep. They've really yep. done some research with it and it works. What do you think about that? I, I totally agree. That's, um, I, I get a little weary about the people who, who are making that hard break between their previous careers and just online marketing business, online business, where they've never worked with a client one-on-one -on -one, or at least in a workshop format of vetting that content and finding out what resonates, looking in people's eyes and seeing, okay, that landed. Getting that feedback from someone, yeah, that that mattered to me, man, or that, that landed for me, that's gonna change my life. Something along those lines in the one-to-one -one offline business development that we talked about in, in the article. Those people who have a body of, of real work with clients and customers, whether you're paying, getting paid $2 per session or $2,000 per session, tells me, okay, there is something here that, has, that can be shared in an online format now that we know what that is. You know, you bring up another quick point, and I don't want us to go three hours here, but the first time I ever gave a webinar, quite a few years ago, with 500 people on it, I was scared out of my mind. And do you know what happened? Ha! Huh, speaking of what just happened, I fell off the call, but didn't know it. And, <laughs> <laughs> and my VA is emailing me, you're not on the call. So I come back 10 minutes later, hysterical, my hair standing up like this. And so I, I wasn't my true self. I should have, I wasn't my highest self. I should have canceled it and done it again. And a woman wrote me, wow, that did not resonate, resonate with me at all. You were kind of preaching to us. And I was, I feel, I hope it was because I was so rushed and so stressed and 10 minutes had fallen out of my webinar time slot. So feedback is so important. You mentioned it in our article. You got to get it. You've yeah. got to ask, how did, how is it working for you? What is not working? You've got yeah. not to be afraid, right? Yes. yes. All right. Where were we? Where are we now? Um, well, I think uh, it's question three. Okay. Have you done the inner work Ooh. on yourself Ooh. Ooh. to understand your true motives for wanting to be a thought leader? You know, I, I, every other word my family says is, is that I say narcissist because I'm working with adult children of narcissists. And, and I don't mean this in any flip way, but a lot of us have a touch of narcissism. What we have to be careful of, I think, is that it's not all about finally I'll be validated. Finally, I'll be heard. You know, a lot of people go into it. They really are doing it to get back. And yeah, I think yeah. you've mentioned in our article so beautifully, that won't work for you. 
<laughs> there we go. No. Is that right? <laughs> no, it's so right. And, and we, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of, there's a, <laughs> unfortunately, there's a lot of cats up on big stages right now that, um, you know, you go behind the scenes of the business and they're, they're just, you know, ah, fuck it, we crushed it. You know, we took their money, you know, I mean, it gets obnoxious in the internet marketing world sometimes, not all the times. I'm sitting in, in Brendan's, you know, big, okay, let's, here's, let's reformulate our strategy for the next five years sessions. And, and he starts, I mean, just, he not only starts, he ends, he keeps coming back to this. We have to, what helps us love our customers? What helps us love our students? Whether they paid us or not, what helps us love? It just kept coming back to this loving your audience. And uh, it just, and that's the reason why there's so much integrity and resonance in the market with him and why he's risen so quickly compared to a lot of, of legends who've tried to take their message online. It's, it's just it's like, like, they aren't there to make a fucking million bucks. They're there to love people. Wow. You know, that there's a flip to that. Um, there's a question and I don't know who to attribute it to. I have it printed out. You know, I'll try to email that to you and we can include it. It's something like, how can I ex as rapidly as possible expand the quality and quantity of what I do for people? And I think the love question uh, that you're talking about with Brendan, I think that also helps you focus on who do I want to serve and who don't I? There's another thing we don't even have in here. Yeah. Serve the people you adore, who you'd want to have over for dinner. Yep. And that's not everybody. You know, no, no. so I love it. I love it. But I think also, how do I scale transformation? How do I do what I love to do with the people I love to do it with in the biggest, best way possible? Yeah. Great um, question. <laughs> when you find the answer to that one, I watch know. out. I, I'm feeling it. All right. Number four, am I undergoing a process of stretching myself as far as I can, understanding where I'm afraid and insecure? of being out there. You know, I had a client just two hours ago. She's so ready to be a thought leader and move and shake and change her industry. But here's what comes out of her mouth. I don't, I don't know how to do it. I don't think I can do it. I'm afraid to do it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. Of course. Um, so I said to her, I hope she doesn't mind me sharing. I don't ever want to hear that again. I don't want to hear it again. When you don't know how to do something, what's another way to say it, Jason? I'm, I'm going to make you be a coach. If I said, Jay, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to be a Forbes writer or whatever. What would you say to me? <laughs> <laughs> well, what's, what's, what's going to help you learn how to do it? <laughs> yeah. Like, no, I know you don't know how to do it. How about reframe it to whenever you think, oh, I don't have what it takes to do it. Think, hmm, interesting. How can I learn how to do it? <laughs> exactly. That's yeah. it. You're not going to know how to do it. You're going to be scared. Less. Do the whole journalistic thing. What? Who? Like, who can you reach out to that might have some insights? What do you need to go? What questions do you need to ask in Google? You know that thing that tells us all the answers in Google to get answers. <laughs> I bet Seriously. you there's freaking one hundred thousand different articles on how you can become the best Forbes.com <laughs> article writer in the world. What 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 is this whole like stalling for and asking a coach? How do I? I don't know how to do it. How do I do it? You know, go do the work. Go do it, do and then you'll figure work. out how to do it. I know we're being flip, and I know you and yeah. I, Jason, both have said, "Oh my God, I don't know how to do this." Yeah. Uh, so we're not trying to put anyone down. We're just trying to say you you got to push through that, right? Uh, Number five. Do I care about moving the needle on a topic I'm passionate about or am I just going for the money and fame? You know what? If you don't have skin in this, if you if this thing is something you cannot not do, uh, don't do it. Stay in your corporate job. Yeah. yeah. That's a bit rough, it, 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 it comes out in different – this one comes out in different ways where the people will say, I, well, I don't – I want to do this. I just don't know what I'm going to be a thought leader about. <laughs> okay. Um, sorry, I have to put my compassion hat on sometimes. Yes, let's let's um, do that. Okay. Well, so what is what is unique about your story, your life? 
what do you have people asking you for expertise around? Well, I don't know. I just want to be, I just want to do that online business thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, you, do you want to like resell? Do. do you want to go and like resell some Amazon widgets or something? I mean, that's an online business that's not based on an expertise or thought leadership. I mean, there's lots of ways you can go and do an online business. If you don't have experience that, that's going to resonate with people and, and help people understand how to get what you've created in your life, then don't get into the thought leadership market. You know what? I've, I've got a, a, a build on that, Jason. I work oh, with people that, all right, build it and they will come. <laughs> I work with so many people who are so talented and I can see it because I have them fill out an 11 page career path, asse career path assessment. Every job what? you ever had, what you loved, 19. what you hate, what? I thought it was uh -huh. 19. I took your, I took your assessment. It's amazing. Everyone go do Kathy's. Go do it. Free assessment. Find it on my site. But the reality is so many millions of people do not see that they have talents because we don't. We, if it comes naturally to you, you're a natural speaker. You're funny as heck. You, you make beautiful characters. You don't know that that's an amazing gift. You think everyone can do it. So to be honest, most of us don't know what we're gifted at. That's why you've got to dig deeper. Don't come to Jason who runs in a huge marketing agency for thought leaders and say, I, I don't really know what I want to be a thought leader. Figure it out. Take my career path assessment. Understand the amazingness of you. Kathy. All right. So you may notice we've been having some technical difficulties. <laughs> this too is useful for thought leaders who are going online or otherwise. Shit happens. Happens. I want to give a two second thing about this. I've been scared to death of technology. I was, I'm admitting, I'm being very vulnerable. I was scared of Skype. My European clients would say, can I Skype? I'd be like, hey, no, I just do it on the phone. I'm scared. I'm scared. I got over it. And then my amazing career project course, it was all audio until my wonderful marketing friend who helps me, David Vox said, you know, let's do some video testimonials. And once I saw my clients, I'm like, how can I possibly not run this course on Zoom, on a platform where I see people? Right. But I was scared to death. I did it the first time. It crashed. I fell off. You know, I live in the woods. We, we have storms. There we go. I'm off. I don't have no power. So what I want to tell you is it's going to happen. Don't be a perfectionist, one of your critters. Yeah. Don't, don't worry. I mean, I will, like, start shaking like we are now like oh my gosh here's jason trying to interview me and i'm i'm making him crazy it's it's what it is today what did to what did you do just like a, a tactical tangent here what did you do what are some things that you did to build up those reserves of of patience and resiliency to to handle these things kathy you know what comes to mind uh, sean Aker and i were talking a while ago and I hope he doesn't mind me sharing this. I said, you know, now that you've reached the level that you've reached, how does that impact things? And what he shared, I think everyone should hear, he no longer worries about, do I have anything to say? He no longer worries about validation. He just is concerned with how do I best say what I want to say? So I think when we're very scared about the technology and all that, it's, what we're afraid of is that we look foolish, that we're going to be uh, considered a, a hack. Yeah. And I think the more you can get over that fear, work through that fear, that people are still going to love you, they're still going to be on the call. You know, yeah. they, they come to you to have a seamless technological experience. They came to listen and learn and talk. And so I think the more you can just not let your ego get hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a tweet of the moment right there. Don't let your ego get hysterical. I think that's uh, it. What do you I, think? I, I see the same thing. Um, I love I love I love watching Brendan in the stressful moments because he he truly just he's a master at just get, staying grounded. Do you know it's it, it's going to blend into a, a spiritual conversation if we don't watch out. I'm good to go there, but oh, baby, um, baby. you know, like just 
finding whether, whether it's meditation, yoga, breathing techniques, finding that way to get to a place of calm and and um, and I think logically understanding that p you're right, people are there to experiencing experience you authentically, and in fact, they may get their best lesson from the entire thing, no matter what you're talking about, from watching you react to when shit hits the fan, and it will. I love it. They may come there for business and walk away and like get the most business, the most amazing business strategies ever. And then forget all that in 10 seconds and only remember that time when the lights went out at the front of the stage and you had to do 15 minutes of it in a less than ideal scenario, which happened at Brendan's uh, last time I was at one of his events. It was just, it was an amazing experience to watch a dude roll on that roller coaster seamlessly patiently um and uh and Beautiful. nobody thought any different from it in fact they learned something I really it, were admiring of it you know i get a little teary-eyed i had forgotten this what that reminds me of is i give a lot of talks and every once in a while someone will really rip me another one in the talk yeah yeah and i'll never forget it was 200 people and it was a guy and they were mostly women and he said this bunch of bullshit. Excuse me, can I swear? Yeah. And everyone stopped and everyone looked at me. And you know, it's not easy in public to be told you're a dummy. Um, but I think the therapy training helped and I just calm, took three deep breaths down to my toes. And I said, you know, I totally hear you and I understand that you would feel that way. Let me let me share my thoughts. And that was the moment that they all remembered that I didn't get defensive, that I didn't rip him another one, that I said I welcome that your critique because it helps me articulate myself in another way, you know? So you're right, it's the snafus that are, are very memorable because that's the real you coming out, right? Yes, it's not the, it's the, the plan it's stage of, persona. <laughs> I got mine PowerPoint dialed perfectly. This is gonna be perfect. No, nope. it's right here. It's right here. It's right here. Oh, um, all right. So all right. we were. I think we were on like question four or five, or in the between four and five, or in between five and six. Can you well, take, think, try to yeah, take us back? I think we were on five. How do you move the needle about what you're passionate about? And you were talking about if you don't know, then you can't be a thought leader. You got to figure out what your heart is connected to. What you cannot do. Yeah. Yeah, it's don't don't come to the get coaching from Kathy if you just haven't got that clarity yet. You kind of you're gonna be wasting your dollars. Well, actually, that's my sweet spot. I help people do that. Oh, I sister, I just teed you up. <laughs> that clients, if you don't watch <laughs> out. Come to me, the lost and the confused. <laughs> Go to Kathy, and then when you got all that clarity about what you're doing with your space, with your digital marketing and brand, who you are, then come to Peaceful. That's it. That's all right. It. You, all right. Number six. Do I incorporate and build on other people's thought leadership? I have, or do I think I know everything there is? I have a little bugaboo because that was me when I wrote my first book. My second is on Brave Up, the 10 ways to rise up, speak up, and stand up boldly and change your life. Ooh. But the first book, I was like, I know everything there, need, there needs to be said about professional crisis. I don't need to look at anything or read anything. How wrong? How sad? How isolated? <laughs> <laughs> How in a vacuum? Yeah, there we go. So um, I don't really think you can be a thought leader if you haven't read a book about the topic that you're teaching. Ooh, ooh. I don't. So yep. here's my tip. Read the body of work that came before and start to say, where do not where do I not agree? Yeah. Where do I not see it like that? But where are they right on? And then the where you don't agree is where you should go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's brilliant. Like staying on the shoulders of the, of the legends and people that went before you and then on the flip side of that we talked about this earlier where uh, people don't have their own their own way of saying what can sound like the same thing they don't have a, a naming convention or a framework that's uniquely theirs and so it just sounds like 
I'm just, well, all I got to do is, is quote Tony Robbins and I got a book about success. Boom. <laughs> nope. Can I Sorry. give a really actionable tip about that? Jason, yeah. this is three hours. Gretchen Rubin, I went to hear her speak. I admire her work, best-selling author on happiness. I watched her at our library. 500 people were there. And she was talking about her book, Better Than Before, about habits. And why is it that we can't even sustain habits that make us happy? What's the problem? Yeah. And the thing that everyone remembered was her framework on how we uh, experience expectation. And there are four ways, upholder, obliger, uh, challenger, or a skeptic, and rebel. That was it. The whole audience was gone. I mean, so excited. Wait, I'm a rebel, and that's why I don't get along with my husband who's a blah, blah, blah. And I watched, I came back and I said, oh my goodness, that's what we mean when we're needing to come up with something new to be an author. Yeah. To get a deal, a book deal today and, and have a great book be promoted and sold unless you want to publish it yourself, which is a whole other thing. You do need to say something that no one has said before. No one. Not no small thing, but um, I came home and I thought, well, what would be my thing? And out poured my six dominant action styles. And you took it. You, yes. you're a seeker. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Very, very cool. You know, think of it in a way no one else on the planet has said it. Right. right. I know it's not easy, but this is what this will what will what will be your hook? What will yeah. make you stand out? All yeah. right. Number Oof. seven. Number seven, am I addressing my emotional fears and challenges around being seen, critiqued, and challenged? Ooh. Put your critter on that one. You have that's seven. the that's the groundhog. He he or she is halfway up out of the hole, going like this. <laughs> oh. It's a very sad little critter. Uh yeah, the groundhog is just publicly shy, share, you know, not willing to be vulnerable, not willing to um, get get a little backlash. Okay. What's our tip? Just don't be that. No, I'm, <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be way too easy. Just don't be the groundhog. Oh, man, we're going to dive into, like, that whole, the whole spiritual realm again, spiritual <laughs> self-acceptance. Uh -huh. Um, yeah. that radical, as Max, Max was talking about earlier, Tara Brock's radical self acceptance, um, work of building up that resilience and, and fortitude. Um, honestly, I don't know how to, how to instill a packet of self belief and confidence that and powder you put in the water to grow the, the, keep the flowers. Here's a tip. You can't be a thought leader if nobody hates what you have to say. I mean, I, we've heard this 52 ways, but you know, the first time a post of mine got on the uh, front page of Yahoo, I said, oh, I've made it. You know, you're going viral. I got 152 comments in 15 minutes and 150 of them were hateful. You don't know what you're talking about. Oh yeah, sure. Here's how to succeed, bend over, you know, hateful. <laughs> This is the most amazing comment ever. I know. Here's and I, I just went crying, crying. Like, what did I want to be viral for? And, you know, there are certain mass media that have trolls and haters. You know, let's face it, that's all they're doing. And Forbes is not like that. But the reality is you're really not saying anything tremendously new if everyone's agreeing with you. Oh, people good. are going to say... Mm -hmm. wait a minute that makes me mad that you said that you know take a look at my Forbes comments they're all not a love fest yeah so understand that that's part of the territory that's a really good insight I don't think I was truly truly ready for that either when I, when I started stepping out and marketing peaceful on a, on a broader level when we were doing our event our elevate your brand event with Brendan Richard and he was promoting it. So there's a massive influx of, of, of audience, you know? And so I shot this video, <laughs> I'll never forget. I shot this video, um, you know, inviting people to this event and, and I promoted it on Facebook and all this stuff. And I, I was 
on top of a water tower somewhere in Portland and my dog was, you know, we're on a water, we're on a walk and dog is like barking at me and saying, let's play fat share. And so I'm throwing a stick and talking to the camera and I promoted it. And this dude, <laughs> I'll never forget. He says, he says, man, this fool trying to fool a fool. Go walk your fucking dog. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, that's the best comment ever. Oh my goodness. Like, ah, how do where are you coming from, dude? Like, like you go, what the fool's trying to fool fool. And I thought I was being all loving and fun. So it was like a little bit of like, whoa, what am I not seeing that this dude sees? But um watching watching folks who are on those big stages like Brendan uh, react, he he really does have fun with it. He shares it with his friend and his team and says, man, look at this amazing comment. And they're horrible. They're horribly bruising. They can be anyways. And um, yeah, so knowing that that's, that's a sign that you're, you've made it somewhere. <laughs> this is spiritual and therapeutic, but listen, what yeah. you get from someone else is more of, so much more them about them. You just yeah. have to remember that. Yeah. It's their, their anger. Yeah, all right. We could do an hour on each one of these, couldn't we? All right. Um, number eight, am I willing to be of service a hundred different ways? Ugh, and a hundred times longer than expected. I know, and I should finish the sentence here, before I ever receive an iota of recognition that I think I deserve. You really do have to do it a hundred different ways, I think. I mean, Brendan, I adore him and his work. I'm sure it didn't happen overnight, Jason, right? Right. He did it and he did it again and he wrote his book and then he, you know, who knows, sold it from the back of his car. I don't know his story, actually, but you do have to be of service a hundred times more than you think. Yeah. When I heard uh, the story like Neil Donald Walsh, she wrote the Conversations with God trilogy. Love uh, it. And when I read how that became, I mean, it was just completely dominated bestseller lists, especially in the spiritual you know, bookshelf. And uh, when I read how that started, that he self published and he literally was driving around in a minivan, in a broken down minivan across America, just giving t free talks, as many talks as he could at churches, just, you know, and, and offering his book until the publishers noticed, oh, wow, you've already sold 15,000 copies on your own. I don't remember exact number, but the point is, he was just, I have a message. It came from somewhere and I need to share it with as many people as possible and, and I'll just trust. I'll just trust. And that really, it's so true. I mean, even with a platform that, I mean, it's not a massive platform, but Peaceful Media has a name in the industry. And we've really gotten serious about thought leadership in the last few months. And and I'm, I gotta admit, like, posting stuff on everywhere I can and sometimes it doesn't have the numbers that I would expect and I just have to remind myself it's it's about a body of work I have to create a body of work we as an agency have to create a body of work because someday someone's gonna come and go wow they've been they've been doing this for years and like finding value in the backlog of the work it's when they come and go well, this what's this Yahoo? You know, he's got like two things on YouTube. He's got two things on his blog. Like, you know, whatever. He's, he's just a newbie. Every way. I want to say, conversation was a life changer for me. Uh, I'm glad you brought it up. Go and read book number one if that's all you can read. And number two, yes, you know, I had some. My book was reviewed in Wall Street Journal, and I want to tell you, this is what every author, new author, thinks. I'm going to be rich now. And I'm going to sell three thirty thousand copies. Yep. You know, it sold three copies from that from that day. So yeah, just because we're affiliated with something major doesn't mean. I made oh, yeah. it. I was on uh, for our first book. We were on the Today Show twice, and we're wow. instantly going back to the hotel and like watching our Amazon rankings. And I think we got close to one hundred. You know, so it's like. Here's a here's a network TV show that six million plus people tune into every single morning, and that's as high as it goes. But I mean, then the day you have to step back and look at the big picture. Be grateful. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
test with Amazon rankings. Oy. All yeah. right, number nine. Do I regularly ask for feedback, critique, help, and constructive criticism so I'm expanding? Ask for it. Ask for it. Ask the people you respect. I should ask you for how, how do you think my website looks? I'll do that later. You know, uh, I should ask everybody I respect. We should do this. What do you think? What do you think about that webinar? How could I have done it better? You know, or this message or this post. Don't be afraid. Yeah, yeah. And guess what? You don't have anything to critique until you do it. See, I think you're you're working with people who may have inflated uh, egos a lot. You know, where they think their stuff is better. That I I'm I feel like I'm getting more thought leaders who are coming to us scared to death that their stuff won't be good enough. So it's interesting. Mm -hmm. We're we That's come at interesting. a couple of different angles. I wonder why that is. I think I do hear from a ton of corporate people who've had a lot of success there. Mm -hmm. Or some people who are broken down in the corporate world and want to leave, but a lot of them have had great success and want to leverage that. And they want the quick path, the quick, easy path, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Interesting. And finally, is there any evidence that my work and ideas have a positive lasting impact? I'm so about this, you know. There are people that are snarky out there that tear things down and we know who they are who, you know, in, on the global stage who that's what their platform is. But I think what lasts in the world is not what tears down. Mm -hmm. It's what builds up. Mm -hmm. So what is, what's your message? What's the meat of your message that will last more than you delivering it. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I, I don't think there's a whole lot better demonstration than a recent <laughs> a recent political conventions. <laughs> no, no, I know. The, the blips of the blips of hate <laughs> don't last very long. And this is a spiritual concept, but I really believe that any hate that you put out in your words or your energy actually bubbles up somewhere else. It's yeah, not yeah. just contained in your sphere. So I really do think use your words so carefully. Use them not as a weapon, you know, use them to build people up. And I think you will catapult yourself quicker to someone people want to be with and learn from. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like Dale Carnegie 101. I mean, <laughs> I guess so, huh? Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, it's not, it's basic, but it's, people forget it. They think, they really do think, I, I think that, you know, I've got this shield or barrier because I'm not talking, I'm, I'm recording a video here and it's just a freaking device and it's just going to go up on YouTube. And I, so I've got a veil here that people won't be able to see into my heart or my soul. That's so not true. It's the exact opposite. Uh, and so, sorry, it's, it, it really is a lot of inner work in order to have success in this, period. 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 Exclamation point. Yep. Yep. That's it. Well, I, I think we covered a lot of ground, right? Absolutely. So, Kathy, what is the best way? This has been super insightful. I'm typically getting into more uh, nuts and bolts strategies for thought leaders, online marketing techniques. This is this this area of success teaching in the thought leader world needs to be exposed more. And so I highly, highly invite and conjole people to jump into your your world as much as possible. And um, so I took yourself your career path self assessment. Uh, is that the best place for people to start to feel your work? I know what you got. Go to kathycaprino.com. There's so much free stuff. There's free videos. There's the dominant quiz, uh, dominant action style quiz. There's the career path assessment. Um, and I would also send people to the Amazing Career Project. And I've done it now in two ways. It's an online course, two times a year, 50 people only. And it's 16 weeks of video. 16 weeks of homework and Facebook group and weekly calls with me. If that's just too much, woohoo, no, overwhelmed. There's the video training that you can just do on your own, self paced, at a much yeah. lower rate, and it's really affordable. So check out kathyprino.com and the amazing career project.com and you know, connect with me. I love LinkedIn, I love Twitter, I love Facebook. 
let me hear from you ask your questions you know challenge us anything you didn't like anything that you went mm, no I don't like it let's hear from let's hear from people please I want I just want to hear from the guy that told me to that I'm a fool and needs to go back and walk his dog. I love that dude. What did he say? You're a fool. Don't be a fool. What Teach fool is trying to fool a fool. Man, go fucking walk your dog. <laughs> on that note, oh, yeah. one one last that. thing on that. We have a, a great uh, client friend, Dr. Neha, who wrote a book about Talk RX, and it was about how communication can cure most of the things that ails us coming from a medical a doctor's perspective. I know Neha, she's on our podcast, kathyandmo.com, check it out, all right. Oh, perfect, yeah. She has a, a statement that I always remember, get curious, not furious. And so when, instead of going, oh man, this fucking guy and responding with that energy, uh, I got real. I mean, I thought it was funny, period. And then I was like, oh, I'm really curious, like where's this guy What's his life like? And so I went and explored his photo albums on Facebook. It was all on Facebook, and I was like, "Gosh, wow, interesting life!" Like, I don't, you know, it looks like you're kind of mad in most of these pictures. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it just helped understand. Like, it was, it just solidified. It's not a. It wasn't about me. No. You know. And you know, I have a, a one I'd love to share. I have a big list. That you know, sixty-five thousand people, and I have a, a unsubscribe button right there. But no, you get the please stop emailing me, like <laughs> like I'm I'm okay, buddy. All right, and every time I want to write, when they write it madly like that, I want to write happy to, but there is this unsubscribe button. But of course, I stop myself because it's not about that. He's mad. He's mad at the message, and I look at what email made him. And this one was on six positive traits that. Of inspiring people. Stop emailing me. Okay, <laughs> and all caps with fifty exclamation points. <laughs> so take a breath, breathe it, get curious, and then come from your highest self. Otherwise, you just waste a lot of time. Yeah. Okay, Kathy. Wonderful. We worked through the tech problems, and we appreciate you. If you make it to the end here, you've worked through the tech problems with us. And we hope that uh, these 10 questions are part of your awareness now and that you're taking these and taking them seriously and starting down your journey of, of doing the inner work that's necessary to create massive success in this industry. Kathy, oh. we're blessed to have your presence here and your insights from all your work and in, in the world. And um, we look forward to the next webcast with you. Thank you for having me. And everyone stay tuned to Forbes where Jason's getting featured on the five biggest mistakes thought leaders and online marketers make. Dun, Get dun, out. Dun, 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 dun. Until I see you next time on Jam at Peaceful Media, remember to love more, play more, do more good, people. Peace.